everyone and happy Wednesday. You know what the channel is all about and that is the military lifestyle. Today we're actually going to talk about intra-service transfers. Now I actually did a video not long ago about inter-service transfers. So this is if you want to leave a branch like the Army for instance and go into a completely different branch like the Air Force. So that would be an inter-service transfer. Today I'm actually talking about intra-service transfers. So this is when you want to stay in your current branch like the Army, but you want to go from one branch within the Army to another. Like maybe you're a 35 Delta, a military intelligence officer, and you want to branch transfer and become a judge advocate, which would be a 27 Alpha. So since you're staying in the Army, but you're switching officer branches, that would be considered an intra-service transfer. Now, there are a couple different ways you can effectuate an intra-service transfer. And one, if you're in the Army, is through the Voluntary Transfer Incentive Program. Now, I did a video all about this program. Here's the link right up here in case you want to click that and check that video out. I talk about the, the program, you know, what it is, how you apply, and ways you can, you know, boost your application. So check out that video if you're interested in VTIP. I also previously did a video about the inter-service transfers. So that video link is right up here if you want to check on that. Now, intra-service transfers. Let's say you want to stay in the Army, but you want to switch your officer branch, but you don't want to go through the Voluntary Transfer Incentive Program. Um, you might not want to leave your current branch and go into a functional area, and the VTIP program is for um, people who want to transfer into functional areas. So you might not want to do that. You might want to go from the branch you're currently in into a professional branch like the JAG Corps, the Chaplain Corps, or the Medical Services Corps. Now if you want to do that, generally what you're going to do is you're going to go to like the JAG Corps uh, you know, recruitment webpage and you're going to submit your application and the JAG Corps recruiter is going to help you through the process. And it's um, similar with the Chaplain Corps and also with the Medical Corps. So that's really how a transfer into a professional branch would look. Um, but let's say you want to go from, oh, I don't know, infantry to military intelligence. Um, or maybe you want to go into, you know, some type of um, other branch, like you want to go into CSS, combat service support. Um, how, did, how would you do that? And of course, another important question is, would you want to do that. Um, so first we're going to talk today about the considerations you should evaluate um, before you actually decide to transfer branches and then we're going to get into how you would transfer branches um, if you don't want to go through the VTIP program and you're not going into a, a professional branch like the JAG Corps for instance. All right, so one thing to think about, of course, is how much you enjoy the branch that you're already in. Um, it's very important that you like your branch, especially considering uh, that you might make a career out of the Army and that much of your training will be, you know, branch specific. So if you hate what you do, then yeah, that's one reason. Um, that you should consider a, a branch transfer. Another question to ask yourself is how proficient are you in your current branch? Um, if you've been an officer for any period of time, you know, you've invested a lot of your energy and effort into, you know, building up your proficiency in your branch. Um, a lot of the skills you learned might be wild, you know, widely applicable. Um, and maybe you're willing to start all over again. But, you know, you have built up specific technical and ta tactical knowledge um, in your specific branch. So, you know, spending several years as a finance officer 
uh, is going to be very different than you know spending several years as an infantry officer. So keep that in mind. Another thing to consider when you're thinking of you know doing an interest service transfer is what job opportunities are you know available for your current branch. Um, look at the job options available at your current rank and you know at future ranks. Um, see if there are job opportunities opportunities that you know match your strengths, your desires, your needs, your goals. So make sure you do that. Um, if you want leadership or command positions and your branch doesn't offer many or any, uh, you might want to change branches. Uh, how much upward mobility, you know, is in your current branch? Um, and this is a really important question uh, because sometimes there is limited upward mobility um, in particular branches. So, you know, sit down maybe with your S1 and, you know, work through that issue. Um, another thing, of course, is considering the possibility that if you switch branches, you might lose rank or you might lose time in rank or time in grade. So when I switched from being a military intelligence officer to being a judge advocate, I was actually a second lieutenant, or excuse me, a first lieutenant with two years time in grade. And when I switched to the Air, um, excuse me, when I switched to the Army JAG Corps, I actually came in as a first lieutenant with just one year time in grade. So obviously I lost one year of my time in grade. And a lot of times if you take a new appointment, this will happen. Um, there were other military intelligence officers that came into the JAG Corps, same thing. They lost rank or they lost, you know, time in rank or time in grade. So, you know, consider any uh, penalties that, you know, might occur if you switch branches. I guess another question would be, you know, maybe, maybe you don't want to, you know, stay in the Army at all. So, you know, if it's the Army as a whole that you don't enjoy, you might want to do an inter-service instead of an intra-service transfer. So maybe you want to leave the Army entirely and go to, you know, the Air Force or um, the Navy or something like that. So these are all questions that I recommend you ask yourself before you initiate the intra-service transfer program uh, within the Army. Now, again, we, we did a video covering VTIP, but of course, you know, that doesn't apply to everyone, uh, especially if you're not looking to get into a functional area. So, what if you just want to, you know, transfer from one branch to another and you don't want to go through the VTIP program? If that's the case, you're going to look at AR 614-100, and I'm going to put it up here. And um, this was actually updated in the December of 2019. Um, and you can just plug this into Google. And specifically, I want you to go to page 11. And on page 11, which is actually uh, chapter four, entitled Transfers, um, you will see that VTIP is the primary method of branch transfer for officers who wish to branch transfer. Uh, while it's the primary method, it's not the only method. And then, of course, you'll see where it talks about those that want to go into professional branches or special branches. So that would be the Chaplain Corps, the JAG Corps, or the Med Corps. But you can also find some other, you know, really, really useful information here, especially if you look at 4-2, which is entitled Voluntary Branch Transfers. And you'll see here that there are some key factors in determining whether a branch um, transfer is approved. So let's say, you know, again, you want to go from infantry to MI Corps, or actually I had a one viewer say that he's interested in going into public affairs. So what you're going to consider is uh, these key factors. Um, reading these key factors, I think, will give you a good idea as to whether you're you know, request will be approved. So one would be branch alignment by year group in both the officer's current and requested branch. 
your civilian and military education. So maybe you're in marketing and advertising in the civilian world and you want to go into public affairs. Well, that's going to be a feather, you know, in your cap. Overall manner of performance and career potential within your requested branch. So maybe there just aren't that many opportunities in your current branch, you know, to promote to let's say full bird colonel or whatnot. And maybe you can make the case that, you know, you would be better off in a different branch because there's more promotion potential. And of course, the overall manner of performance, they're really gonna be looking at those OERs. So make sure that those are top notch. Special qualifications as appropriate. So whether you've received any special training that would be directly related um, to the branch you wanna go into. And then of course, this ties in with the next one, demonstrated aptitude for branch specific training and assignments. And then of course, and this comes as no surprise to anyone, the last factor uh, listed in the AR is needs of the Army. Folks, at the end of the day, if you're trying to leave a branch that is undermanned, the Army might not let you do that. <laughs> or if you're trying to go into a branch that's overmanned, the Army uh, might not let you do that. So just keep that in mind. And also make sure you're aware of all of the special requirements for each branch. So um, military intelligence officers, for instance, are required to have a TSSCI most officers are only required to have a secret. So of course, if you're looking to transfer into the MI Corps, you're gonna have to meet that basic eligibility requirement. And so, you know, you can easily go to Google and type in like requirements for being an MI officer, requirements for being a public affairs officer, and you should get a really good idea of the basic requirements. And then of course, once you've decided that you meet those, Definitely pull up AR 614-100 and look specifically at page 11, and that'll really give you the information needed to get you started on this uh, transfer process, whether you want to go through VTIP or, um, or not. So, hopefully all of that information was helpful. If you guys have any questions, of course, feel free to drop those in the comments below, and um, I will be back at you soon with another video all about that military lifestyle. <laughs>